Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I'm your host, Julia Renee. I'm Gabriella Fortune. I'm Kendall Graboff. And we have special guest Erica Sky here again. Yay! Hello, everybody. Back by popular demand, Erica Sky. Hello. Hello. So, Erica, what are we going to be talking about today on this exquisite episode of the Know Your Power podcast? We are going to be talking about balancing relationships and health and fitness. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. That was beautiful. So, all of us have kind of our own experiences with this and relationships that we're either currently in or relationships that we've been in in the past. And this is not just like relationships as far as like your significant other. This can also be friends and family because sometimes when you get into, and not necessarily like the fitness industry, but when you start taking your health and fitness seriously, a lot of people have a problem with that. Like people don't understand and sometimes you can even get either made fun of or um, almost coursed into doing something different that doesn't align with your goals. And I know that you guys are probably listening to this and being like, I know an exact person that has done this before. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I feel, I feel like we can kind of start by like, have, do you guys have an experience either current or past where this might've been like a problem with your friends and family or your significant other where they didn't quite understand your goals and why it was important to you? I think as far as like working out in fitness, what we do specifically bodybuilding, yeah. it's so extreme that your family, either they're concerned about you or they just don't understand why you're putting so much energy into it. Mm -hmm. We understand because we know what it takes to get to that point, but your family, especially like our moms and dads, a completely di different generation, they didn't grow up doing any of this. Mm -hmm. So they just don't really understand. But nobody's gonna believe in you until you have something to show for it. So I that's agree. just like what I kept telling my parents. I was like, it's, got, it's all gonna pay off one day. Like, I know you guys are worried like why I'm gone for so long or what I'm doing in the gym for two hours, but that's just what it takes. And we see that, we see the outcome of it and they don't, but that's okay. Like, that's I feel sweet. like you have to just tell them like, hey, I'm good. Like, this is healthy for me. I'm, this is a positive outlet. It's all going to pay off one day, and I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I agree with that. I feel like my mom has always been super supportive, and I know that my whole family listens to this podcast, so <laughs> hi, guys. Um, and hi, Kendall's to my, family. <laughs> hi, Kendall's family. And to my dad, who also listens to this, um, I know that he tries to be supportive, but I also have been told that he's not super on board for me competing, and he just views it as very unhealthy still to this day, even with me doing, like, very five or six shows under my belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understandable. I see where he's coming from. Like, he doesn't necessarily want to see his daughter on stage in a bikini either. And like, that's okay. And I guess that's what we can kind of get into is like how to still navigate those relationships and not let that defer you or stop you from doing what you still want to do. Cause I'm still going to compete one day. And even if he doesn't love that, I do it. Like I know that he's supportive and loves me enough to at least be there on the sidelines just for, for my, my mental state, not for me physically. And that's amazing. Yeah. I yeah. That. That's what family should do. Yeah. So even if they don't understand it or they don't know why you're doing it, their biggest thing is that they should just be there for you and support you no matter what. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cause regardless, it's your life to live. And if they don't agree with it, like that's okay. And our parents probably did stuff that uh, their parents didn't yeah. believe in yeah. or didn't think was a good idea. And my parents definitely were like skeptical at first. I don't think my dad was because my dad was a bodybuilder. He was a soccer player. He was a weightlifter. I didn't know that. He was a wrestler. So like it was normal. My dad was like, yeah. <laughs> and my mom was like, no, you're going to, you know, all of those things. You're going to look manly. You're going to look X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Because she grew up in the generation where like muscular women was actually kind of frowned upon. So yeah. that's a, like, of course she was going to think that. Now she's literally like my number one fan. And if anything, she is more concerned that I'm not resting enough, that I'm not yeah. chilling out enough. Like, that's oh, funny. You I know, she, it's, that. the tables have turned, but it definitely wasn't always that way. Erica, yeah. what about you? What has your family, like, thought about the whole process and your fitness journey? I think there's been a lot of, like, ups and downs with it, but an example that's coming to my head right now would be, like, eating plant-based still to this okay. day, whether it's family or not. I get a lot of, like, feedback for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that you just have to get so clear with, like, what you want and your why that you're okay with people not completely understanding. Exactly. And sometimes they forever won't. Like I still get shit from my family, um, from certain people about being vegan all the time. And yeah. you just learn to laugh about it. And like, okay, this is my vision. You might not see that, but 
that's okay. Yeah. So if a family member is completely off board with your dreams and your aspirations in life, what do you guys do? Mm. I think keeping them out of the loop for whatever that dream is. Like, I don't think you have to burn the bridge of the relationship. I think you yeah. can just like, okay, I'm just not going to talk about my career with them or my, my, the fact that I want to do bodybuilding with them. Like, if you know that's a touchy subject, also don't like poke it. Just like keep your relationship with that person separate yeah. from the relationship Very you have smart. with your goals. I love that. And like learning to crave the support of people who like naturally support you. So yeah. it's like you do choose your own family ultimately. Like if they might understand, ultimately you're going to gravitate towards people who are more aligned with that vision. It's yeah. very true. Yes. Like I have certain people in my family that I can tell are concerned with what I do and how I show up on like social media. And like they're just a little bit more conservative but it's to the point where yeah. it's judgy and it's not actually helpful yeah. and um I just know okay I'm not going to bring up these topics around this family member and then I have another family member and we talk about health and fitness and like different kind of meal ideas and he he might not um understand why I go on stage in a bikini and do all these things but he understands the importance of the health and fitness aspect so that's where we can relate on but there's definitely going to be family members there's going to be partners that that change that you start to make in your life they're not going to understand because say you met a person at a certain point in your life and they expect you to be that person forever but life happens you change you grow you evolve and sometimes you might grow more towards oh i'm realizing the importance of health and fitness for just my overall life and how beneficial it is for me my anxiety maybe my anger um there's so many other benefits other than just how you look it's it, things start to change really drastically once you start looking at it in that kind of aspect. So it can be challenging when you start to change and that person, family member, relationship is like, wait, whoa, 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 what's going on? We used to go out to eat every night mm -hmm. and now you're saying that you want to make a salad at home. So it's kind of weird for them because they it's like they ordered something on the menu and then they brought them something completely different. And they're like, that's not what I ordered. Yeah. That's not what I wanted. And it's like, it's, it's hard. I, my, my last relationship, it's, it was ultimately the reason it ended. Not because I didn't break up with him because he didn't work out and he didn't want to eat healthy because that really wasn't it. But I started noticing that we weren't aligned anymore. And if I'm yeah. with a person and with friends and family, I need to be aligned with their values if I'm going to spend a significant amount of time with them. And it's just, it wasn't. I was waking up at 5 a.m. going and doing my workout. I would come home. I would write in my journal every single thing that I was working out. I was super obsessed with it at that time. And I get really OCD about it. And he just, he didn't understand. And he actually started pulling me away from it. He started like kind of making fun of me, trying to make me stop doing the thing that was making me so happy. And it ended up growing us apart. And that might be what happens with your relationship. And you might not want it to be that way. And it doesn't always have to end up being that way, but you can't change people. People can only change if they want to. I was going to say, going along with that, like if that person is meant to be in your life forever, yeah. they will start either, even if they don't also want to wake up at 5 a.m. and go do cardio with you and go journal with you, like they'll at least support you doing it and not try to tear you away from it. Exactly. There's like a fine line between being there and supporting and then pulling away and forcing you to change in the opposite direction. Like mm -hmm. that's such a negative. I feel like they could keep their lifestyle while you change yours and still be there and love you and support you in the way that they can, or they could go all in with you and mm -hmm. like full send and yeah. be like, we're going to do this together, babe. Yeah. Um, and I feel like those two are both really healthy options. That third option of tearing you down, changing your habits, like not letting you it's grow. A red flag. Yeah. That's someone you don't want in your life anyway. Yeah. I yeah. like how you said that because correct me if I'm wrong, but basically what you're saying is like this person, this relationship that you have it doesn't have to look exactly like yours but the main thing that you guys want to have in common is that there is an importance of health and fitness mm -hmm. not because of how you look but literally just so that you have a longer life yeah like literally and if that is at the forefront you know it's not the most important thing in a relationship obviously but if that's what you guys align on even if it looks differently then that's okay exactly. but in this relationship it didn't matter to him like at all and he was tearing me down mm -hmm. for it mattering to me. So yeah. that's when it, that started happening. I was like, okay, then yeah. I have to go. That's you have, yeah, you have to put yourself first in that situation. And like, if you're 
so when you meet each other mm -hmm. and it's not the same like you you said you ordered a pepperoni him. pizza and <laughs> and you're changing into a pineapple yeah. pizza and that's okay because people evolve through the years nobody's gonna stay the same yeah. so you have to put yourself first in that situation and just be like okay you can either change with me you don't have to i'm not asking you to change you can change with me or you know we're our paths are just gonna have to separate yeah, and that's like, okay and that's just life yeah. that's okay right and it's hard at first i think to okay i'm gonna love myself more than what i'm comfortable with or the people that love me most you know mm -hmm. you put your family like oh these are my, this is my family i have to you think you need to please them or whatever it may be so that first like barrier of breaking out of it like for me i know um, going back to conservative, my family, grandparents, my brother, my stepdad's very, very conservative. So posting even bikini pictures, um, getting my first yeah. tattoo was a lot of judgment at first, you know. I feel like with family, all you need to tell them is be like, hey, if I'm happy, you guys should be happy too. Mm -hmm. In a relationship, I feel like, okay, well, if they really love you, they're going to accept you for who you are and your goals and your aspirations and your ambitions in life and like that's the road that should be down but as far as family like as long as you're happy and you're healthy and you guys are doing the right thing like your family should support you and love you no matter what yeah it seems like the overwhelming theme here is like number one is to really figure out what your I, uh, maybe not boundaries I would say boundaries comes next but first figuring out what are these aspects that are super important for you in relationships um, more so probably like friendships and partners because mm -hmm. family, you know, it's, it's like they're always, you can only they're, do they're so always much. Be yeah. there. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, they might, they might not support it and, that, and that's fine. But if you're going to like spend the rest of your life with like your partner, there has to be some values that are in place. Like, this is what's important in our relationship. Like, is that okay with you? Like, can we mm -hmm. do this together? Can we grow together and evolve? And if not, then maybe they're, they're not the partner for you. And that's completely fine because I never want to go into a relationship because what I started to do was I started trying to change him yeah. and make him into something that he's not. And that's not fair to me. How mm -hmm. am I, who am I to say, this is how you should live your life? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I ended up being like, well, this is really important to me. And the next partner that I had, all of all of those were aligned. And as far and like with fitness, and I feel like with financially too, if you see yourself going somewhere over the top and your partner is weighing you down, it's okay to be selfish and leave because that's just not healthy. I feel like with my last relationship, I had these big dreams and I wanted to go places and I wanted to do things and I wanted to make money. And he was just so okay and just being right. stagnant at I the bottom. I was in the same right. situation. Like, I was it's just like, like okay, well, there's gonna, even though we love each other, like, I want to go further in life and uh, And one of the best things happening. I've heard is in relationships too, like, especially intimate, is sometimes, like, love is not enough. You yeah. Have to, it's That's not enough. literally love the theme of enough. my life. Anybody that has <laughs> known what have, I've been going through these past couple of months, that's literally the theme. And it's just crazy. Like, love isn't enough. I loved this man that we, we just weren't aligned with the fitness aspect of it. Yeah. But I had to let him go, and then I ended up meeting Zach, and we were so aligned with, like, everything. Everything. So I love that she said that. Like, yeah, because even though, like, one enough. door closes, another one will open. Mm -hmm. It's right. not the end of the world. Like, if you and your partners don't align on that level, it's you will find somebody that does align with you with everything in life. Yeah, yeah it, it will, when you find that person or people, like I found that with you guys as friends, it's mm -hmm. like when it fits, it just fits and it just mm -hmm. feels right. And you yeah. shouldn't have to force anything or try to like over explain yourself. Like it should just feel natural. And like every value that does align should not align naturally. You shouldn't have to convince someone that you're, your viewpoint is the right one. Like they should just understand you or at least respect you and love you enough to like try to see you. I feel like we're telling everybody to break up with their boyfriends know, if they right? don't let them go to the gym. Dump their ass. <laughs> so if we're they're not, not if they're that. not benching 325, <laughs> we're not flat. saying no, that. I'm kidding. And literally we're like, we're not like, I'm not sitting here being like, I have to have a boyfriend that's a bodybuilder and he wakes yeah. up and does. I literally I, don't want to date a bodybuilder. I'm right. like, no, I just want to be aligned and know that these are important and that's all that matters. However, he does it in his own way cool great yeah. like zach doesn't even bodybuild really anymore he does just as like mainly yoga and yeah. a couple and i'm not mad about that because that's his yeah. way. but he understands what you have to do as a bodybuilder as a social media mm -hmm. influencer like they understand that as long as they understand what goes yeah. into it it's going to work out because he knows that you have to wake up at 5 a.m. He knows that you have to eat clean. He knows that you have to spend time on your phone and your computer because that's your job. This is what you do. But if they don't 
get that, it's going to, you guys are going to clash. It, they just have to respect it. Yes. They don't, they don't have to do the same thing. They don't exactly. have to even like endorse what you're doing as long as they respect you and like understand that you're going to do it with or without them there and just love you through it. Like that's the most important in my eyes. Yeah. Not the actual thing, but the root of it being aligned. So y'all's drive is aligned. Like yes. the, the reasonings behind it. My mm-hmm. passion is aligned. You know, mm-hmm. it might not look the same, but these feelings and these desires are the same. Yeah, exactly. It's like you pick these pillars and it's like, okay, well, where do you fall in this pillar? Like health, fitness, drive, non-complacency. How do you show up in those ways in your life? And it's going to look different for each of us. You know, like Zach and I look completely different now. They used to be almost exactly aligned and he doesn't want to be a bodybuilder anymore. And that's, that's completely fine with me, but he still has health and fitness at the forefront of his mind. It's still important in his day to day. And I feel like what we kind of talked about first is really setting those and making sure that those are aligned with whatever partner relationship friends that you have. And then next it's like, there's going to be those people that don't quite understand. And it's not necessarily your job to help them understand, but if they don't, I want you to kind of take a look at yourself. Like, have you actually sat down with them and kind of, this is why it's important to me. This is why it matters. Like, that's when I would explain to my mom and dad, I say, this is why I want to body build. You yeah. know, you might see it as X, Y, and Z, but I see it as so much growth. Yeah. And now that, they're, oh, it took them a while, but they like, mm-hmm. they totally get it. And they've seen how it's transformed my life. So really speak up to your family members, like tell them what you expect from them and you know, what's okay to say, what's not okay to say. So like for me with one of my family members, I just know like, okay, my boundary that I'm setting is I'm just not going to talk to him about this specific aspect of my life. This is Mm -hmm. just, I've just said it and that's what I'm going to do. And then for example, like when I'm on season for prep for bodybuilding, once I start, I, I literally, I've learned this. I sit down with my parents and say, I'm starting my bodybuilding cut now. I might be a little bit less uh, here, a little less present. I might be more tired, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying this right now, but I'm going to do my best. I'm not going to eat these foods. I'm not going to do these things. Please do not offer me X, Y, and Z. And they just radical honesty with people. I don't know why it's so hard, but if you literally just tell people what you will and will not accept, you can save yourself so much yeah, heartache. Communication. That's just all it is. Literally just communicate. So don't. How are people going to know how to treat you if you don't tell them how to treat you? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do the same thing with my preps and it's a lot easier now. I just go, hey, I'm in prep and everyone knows exactly how to act literally. around me and they know I'm going to be a little bitchy when I'm hungry and like all these little things. But it's hard in the beginning, like my first prep ever trying to explain to them. And I wasn't, I was just living with my mom during my first prep. So she saw it. She was firsthand. She saw it. But then like holidays would come around and I would be around my brothers and then it comes a lot of, oh, well, why, why can't you eat this? Or, oh, you didn't eat that. Or like, do you want to try this? And I had to stand up and be like, hey, guys, I'm in prep. I decided to do this. Support me. Don't support me. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Don't offer me your cake. Like, right. especially with like the loving grandparents, like, please have yeah. a bite, you know, and it's like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you don't like, it's hard because they don't understand. Like, even the people so far removed don't even understand. Like, they don't even realize people step on a stage and like pose. Like, they don't get like, it people at People get all. paid to look absolutely yeah. insane and muscular. Yeah. yeah. And that's literally when I'll sit down with them and they'll be like, wait, so you can't have this one thing. And it's different off season and on season. But I'll literally be like, uh, like uh, for my grandma, because she's just like, you look so skinny, me, ha. And I'm like, oh, hey, grandma. I know I'm dying. Grandma. And she's like, why can't you have this? Just one thing. And I'm just like, grandma. So here, let me just kind of give you an idea. If I have like this one thing, like it's, it's so detailed right now that this matters to my ultimate package I put on stage and I might not look as good as one thing. And I was like, and also for me, if I have this one thing, I'm going to want another thing. I'm going to want another thing. And I said, gotcha. and then there's kind of like a, th- and then that's a good way to just explain like explaining it to her because she's like, what do you mean? Eat this one thing and, and your whole, everything is ruined. <laughs> it's like, they don't understand. They're not a bodybuilder. So it's your job to kind of educate them on why this is important to you. you can't just expect people to yeah, be like, that's what I was just I'm about on board to say. With you starving yourself and, and changing into a completely different person that I don't know. Yeah. And it's like, you give people the benefit of the doubt, like let them understand. And then if you still need to move on from them, then move on from them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. Goodbye. <laughs> what else is in our notes? LOL. I love that you just said that. <laughs> so we kind of went through 
how to balance these relationships. And look, sometimes it just ends up being like these tough conversations and what to do like when you don't have support and you need to move on. So I think it would be good to kind of talk about like for the people listening that are in situations right now where they don't have the support, how to navigate that. Um, from their significant other, from their saying? significant others, sometimes or, just, or like a best friend. It's like or friend like groups. Not have friends. Or and like- let's talk about let's let's touch on friends because we haven't yet. We've said we've talked about family. We've talked about relationship. Let's talk about friends. Ooh. I feel like and another topic that I keep seeing on the internet being brought up is that workout partners. Like if you surpass your workout partner, like mm. what what's what should you do? So uh, just on a general topic, friends. Your friend group, if they do or they do not support you as far as fitness, like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, for example, I can use the example of what happened to me because I was a hairstylist first, didn't work out, ate whatever I want, whenever I wanted my health, my fitness went out the window. It's like I didn't know who I was anymore. And I was in a environment where that was normal for all of us. It was Mm -hmm. normal because, like, if you're a hairstylist like it's one of the freaking hardest jobs ever because you have to be on your feet dressed pretty in heels all day talking to people over and over and over again and you literally don't have time to eat like at our salon we didn't have breaks we just ate whenever we had a chance in between clients you know you you why would you want to do that you sign a contract (laughs) at the beginning to say like you you don't have to you don't have to do it you i signed it because you make more money if you don't clock out oh, and stuff like that. So you literally just eat when you have time. And when we had time, oh. it was like, okay, burgers. I would like tacos, like whatever is around. So if I had a meal a day, it was like that. So I was in an environment when that was normal. Yeah. And then I started really taking a look at myself and I wanted to change and I started changing. So this, I'm the only one in a group of people that are all similar. And I start changing. I start doing my cardio, I start lifting, I start bringing my meals to work, I'm saying no to all the treats because the clients would bring us treats, literally was like hard no, hard no, to the point where people were like making fun of me in there, they were all my friends, but it was kind of like, oh, Julia won't eat that, Julia's not going to eat that, I bet you won't eat that. And it's so ridiculous (laughs) how how mean people are about, like, Mm -hmm. you just are trying to better yourself, it's more accepting to go get a drink at a bar than right. to not eat right. something or like not Dude, eat. Dude, the fact unhealthy. that you just said that is That's wild. So it blows my mind. You're people, right. People will literally offer you to go get a beer, but they won't offer you to get a salad yeah. or to go work out together. Or to go work like, out. Together. That's weird. And it's so weird that it's normal. And going to- out to a club isn't weird. Wow. Right. That's so but crazy. I will also add that I feel like all these same people at some point, if you stick with it, they'll come back and be like, "Oh wait." You know, that, I want to know more about that. That's this. the second part of my story. I ended up coaching two of them. Right. Yeah. Oh right. My gosh. Ended up coaching two of them and they all started bringing their lunches. So this is the, this is the awesome part of this is that you don't have to change anybody around you. Just you being you and yes. showing up with what's important. There's a domino effect that happens. Yes. They started seeing me change. Yeah. Not only my body, I was happier. I had more energy. I was more vibrant. Uh-huh. I was like, oh my God, this is great. I need people to know. I started coaching two of them. They started seeing it. Everyone started packing meals. The fridge in there I was stocked. I love that so much. So that's the thing is like, you don't have to change the, try and change people and make them do something that they don't want to do. Your vibrancy for yes. life is going to show on Mm -hmm. them and if they want to change into it they can some of them it lasted some of them it didn't and this is the sad truth it's almost like people make fun of you for being healthy because they know they can't do it themselves yeah it comes from a place of jealousy yes it really does and that is like it's not that's not the case all the time but i have found that like in situations that i'm just like oh well you're making fun of me right now because you know you can't do this i i would say it's more like a i I agree with that but what not all the time that's not always the case but i've have seen that I feel like what it does is it holds a mirror up to their face. Yeah. And shows them what they could be doing, what they know they should be doing. So since it does that, then they come back at you with like, I'll make fun of you and stuff yeah. like that. Because they want to do those things. Mm-hmm. They, or just simply they don't understand. Yeah. Like or I know with don't, veganism, they just don't understand. Yeah, they mm-hmm. just don't understand. Like for me, I'm like, I think it's so cool that you have been able to stick to that for so long. I would never do it because it's just not me personally. Just like people are like, I would never be a bodybuilder. That's just not me personally. But I respect that you've been able to stick to your guns for that long 
doesn't matter what anybody else says. Like that's, yeah. that's the main root of it. And that's really cool. I think we touched on it a little last pod too, but that's how you find your group in general. Like mm-hmm. I think all of us, like we're struggling to find like-minded people that supported us and like, just like encouraged us to do whatever we wanted to do. And the way we got there was just by being ourselves and doing our thing. We just went about every day, like trying to better ourselves in, in the gym, outside of the gym and our mental health. And like, eventually you find other people that align with that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like to the people out there who you may not have a supportive friend group right now, or you're like, damn, I, I, I realized my friends weren't supporting me. So I left them, but now I'm alone. Mm. Just stick with it. Like just keep doing your thing and you will eventually attract the right people or those people will come back around and be like, I see your vision now and they'll get it. Yeah, that's true. In a friend group too. So we have like four friends in our, in our friend group of, of us. I feel like we all love fitness. We all love working out. But our workout styles are not all the same, like the way. I think they're very different, to be honest. Yeah, Yeah. but we still work out together. We still support each other's goals, Mm -hmm. and we still, like, love each other regardless. So I feel like if you have a friend in your friend group that's like, oh, well, I don't want to deadlift, um, Try telling them to like maybe try it out or like get rid of the friend. I like learned. they should they should be supportive regardless of what you guys are doing. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. Erica, she's doing hit workouts and making me freaking do step ups with weight, and I'm like, okay, it's You'll cool, try and it. I'm gonna do it yeah. because I love Erica and I trust her, and she's my friend. So like, it's right. And then I'm friends, I'm lifting yeah. heavier with you guys, and that's out of my element. But I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this is this it's is cool. cool it's to fun learn and you, it, it's like in a way you're supporting each other because mm-hmm. that's what they love to do so like you want to love it too but if you are working out and like you have to get a split done so like you you said the other day that like yeah we were gonna week. yeah mm-hmm. julia and i were gonna hit legs and i came back to her and i was like look i'm really tired like i'll still train with you but more of a pump like i can't go all out and you were like look it's in my program like i have to do a really heavy leg day yeah. today so let's not do today and yeah. we didn't work out that day and, and that's, that's fine. That's okay that yeah. was literally a hard text for me to write because i'm really? all about setting boundaries for people but for me it was like oh i want to i want to work out with my friend <laughs> i was like i want to do this thing and i was like okay julia long term you want to be miss olympia you want to go to the olympia yeah. stage yeah. i have the energy to hit a hard workout i was like ken i gotta do and i said i was like i know she's my friend she's gonna be like exactly do your yeah. thing bro and just exactly, exactly what she said and it was so simple it's communication communication yeah. literally it's as easy as that so what do you do if you like outgrow your your workout partner see i think it's like what you were saying it, it's i think it's more not necessarily workout partner that's important i think it's outgrowing your friend group okay yeah, right. because that's that's what happened to me i didn't outgrow them in the sense like i'm better than you it was more so like they all just did things that i just didn't do or didn't enjoy mm-hmm. and the thing is is that just because health and fitness matters to you doesn't mean that you can't go out to eat. Doesn't mean you can't go out. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't do these things because our life is not about food. It's not about partying. It's about being present with the people. Yeah. I go out every time, almost every time I go out, I'm sober, yeah. completely sober. And maybe if you can't do that, you got to look inward a little bit, but yeah. I'm sober because I know I have fitness goals. I don't feel that great in the morning. I want to hit my cardio and I know if I drink, then I'm not going to be able to do those things. And just because you don't want to do those things doesn't mean you can't go to X, Y, and Z. You can still go out to eat with your friends. Just know that you're going to have to make different choices than your friends. And mm-hmm. some people avoid these things completely because they don't know how to do this balancing act. And what I was going to add on to that is that's why, for me, the friends and people I surround myself with are so important. That's why I appreciate this friend group so much because when you do want to do those things too and you are tempted by outside things, it's good to have a friend group around you that can help you keep accountable because y'all are aligned. So if you do struggle with it or something that you know that, oh, I might be weak, it's good to have that group that's like, no, I got to go do cardio tomorrow morning. Like, come on, you know. So and they're like, huge. I got it. I got you, bro. And right. it's super it could, awesome. And we all slip. We all go into like different moments. So yeah. for me, it's, it is so important who I keep close because it's like, if I'm going through a struggle or a low moment, I'm going to look at you guys and be like, okay, they're on it. This, this is motivating me, you know? And mm-hmm. that's so important because I know who I want to be and where I want to go. You are a, a product of the five people you spend the most time with. That's it's like, a, sure. yeah, that's like a scientific thing. You just like evolve into them. So surround yourself with people who are, either ahead of you and what you want to be like I look up Mm -hmm. to all of you social media wise and also fitness wise and like 
in, as some people would sit here in my position and be jealous or like want to be in your position. Mm-hmm. But instead I use it as motivation. I'm like, wow, I learned like a new thing, like a new tool on Instagram from Julia or like, mm-hmm. wow, I'm starting to see like some of the contracts Gabby's getting. That's motivating. Like just seeing that from all of you and like you're doing like so much modeling and it's like. I take a little bit from all three of you and I'm just like, I want to evolve and be on their level. And I feel like that's how your friend group should be. If you're looking at them and you're like, wow, I wouldn't want to be in any of these people's shoes. That's maybe not the best group for you. So this could, some of the people listening, I feel like could be in that position where your friends are the ones evolving and going into something. And now you have to make the choice of, do I want to follow them? If they're getting into fitness more than you are, maybe you guys all started going to the gym together, but now they're all getting started with competing. You need to look at yourself and be like is that something I want to do is it not and then like kind of navigate yourself and like decide if you want to continue with that friend group or not yeah and there's going to be a point where you kind of have to make a decision if you are growing out of them and I think the red flag is like if they start trying to pull you down if they're making fun of you if they're trying to get you off track from your goals that's when you know you need to start separating yourself for me I just naturally I separated myself because I quit the salon so naturally we just kind of faded out they were still like really good friends and like socially it was like so fun to hang out with them but the things that they wanted to do was just like not things that I I, like that are fun for me and um I was lonely for a very yeah chunk of my time and I think that's what people are so afraid of is like well if I do leave my friend group I'm gonna be lonely and it's like no company is better than bad company just always think about that yes I was lonely yes sometimes I cried myself to sleep because I didn't have any friends Me too. I had no one to hang out with and then I met a whole group of fitness people because I went outside of my comfort zone and joined an Instagram group with fitness influencers in Austin mm-hmm. and literally that was the that one decision, that one uncomfortable decision pushed me to be who I am right now. And I met a whole bunch of people that had similar values. We were all aligned. And then all of a sudden I went from being lonely to like having more friends than I could have ever imagined. Yeah, yeah. And when I said, I got to wake up and do cardio. No, I can't. I can't eat that. I'm on prep. They were like, got you, bro. Yeah. I understand that. Go do your thing. And that's, that's really awesome. cool. Social so don't media, be afraid. Social media can be such a tool. When I was in my lonely, loneliest state, like 17 years old, starting bodybuilding, had no friends that even went to the gym. Mm -hmm. I took to social media and I started making all of these girlfriends from literally other countries even that like are my age and competed and we would just talk and I would just reach out to them and like text them. And some of them I've still never met and I probably never will, but like for a period of my life, we were each other's support team. And Mm -hmm. it's like, find people, like there's so many communities and I feel like social media, like Facebook groups, Instagram Mm -hmm. groups, like even just looking at hashtags of people of similar interests. Like I know it might sound dumb, but like if you're so lonely, like that's such an easy way to find other people with at least the same interests. And you guys can like start being mutuals on Instagram and supporting each other, liking each other's photos. And then like, I I don't know, there's these two girls that live in Florida who um, one of them has the same sponsor as me now. And she's like, hey, I'm coming to Texas in two months. Like, let's shoot. And I'm like, Heck yeah, like that's an instant friend. Like we already have the same interests. I love her page. We've been supporting each other for like six months and now I get to meet her and be like real life friends. That's so cool. Right, and it is wild, like that first feeling when you meet someone online who like embraces you more than maybe people that you know in real life. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? I feel like what that is. Like, cause it's just such a hard pill to swallow. Right. You you like- people you don't even know. Don't even know supports you more than like people that have known you for years. And it's just like, why? And also it's like, if you do have a fall, not necessarily falling out, but like you said, just like natural Naturally, you move in different um, directions. I don't feel like it's something that you can be, like, you have to be salty about. It's such a beautiful thing if you're able to just connect a few times a year and still like, maybe you're not aligned on the same path, but you're still able to have that bond. You don't have to be hateful. You know, some people have like resentment towards that because you grew apart instead. It's like, mm-hmm. no, that's just life. That right. Is that literally is life. life. And, and you have to have that open mind. And, and I feel like too, evolving has helped me so if I see other people that evolved that maybe we're not aligned I don't take that personal and vice versa and I think that's important yeah like for the group that I was in like their passion was doing hair so they were not going to evolve into being like a bodybuilder being on social media their passion is doing hair like we evolved in different ways I was just like you're not you're not going to evolve to love hair as much as them so it's just a disconnect now it doesn't mean like one's right one's wrong yeah we just didn't speak the same way I was like like, I hate this bro (laughs) I don't like this I like what you said about um when your friend group is like doing things that you don't necessarily agree with, like I really have always believed in like having a smaller circle and you really cannot walk through shit without getting it on you. Like 
take a sit down and take a look at like who you are surrounded by because their their actions like what they do on the weekends the way they eat like that's all gonna affect you there it's doesn't really necessarily like you can't really see it but their actions do influence Mm -hmm. you and I feel like it doesn't have to be a negative. Like it no, could be yeah. like with a you guys, it's a positive. Too, yeah. Like when you yes. find the right people, like I said, when it just clicks and your values align, like those types of things will come natural. Like I see you guys eating healthy and like yesterday I definitely wanted to eat bad, but like I saw mm-hmm. you guys wanted to like order a bowl or like have something healthy. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll eat healthy too. It's just like easier when you're in an environment that's good. I definitely you. wanted pizza yesterday. I, yeah, I also <laughs> wanted pizza, no, but, definitely wanted pizza. but they wanted healthy. <laughs> yeah. So... Yes. See how that influenced you? Like, yeah, it's right. just, it without you even knowing. Like, you guys could just be like, oh, yeah. well, I want to go for a walk. Well, right. you want to take an Uber. You guys are going to probably go for a walk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or the other yeah. night, I wasn't going to go to the gym. And then y'all pulled out the jump ropes. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's just the smallest little thing. Yeah, yeah, having that, like, support. It's like, okay, I I don't have the strength right now to, to not do this. Yeah. So I need my backup. And then they're, they'll rush to your... I guess, rescue. And Mm -hmm. I think that once all of us found each other, we started growing at an exponential rate because Mm -hmm. all of us were aligned. We were positive with each other. And even when we didn't believe in ourselves, you guys yeah. believed in exactly yeah. us. So like, it was just like, we got to keep going. Yeah. Right. It'll happen. I'm so guys. grateful. Uh, girl power. I'm so grateful yeah. for you. High five. High five. <laughs> we're <Yeah>. lame. Yeah, <laughs> I hate but, us. That was a really good episode, guys. No, I liked that. Is yeah. there anything else you guys want to add on, like, your opinion yeah. on relationships? I Maybe f- for people out there, like, struggling right now to make friends or to Put find yourself someone out they there. love. I also say with, like, um, intimate relationships and friendships, too, but definitely intimate relationships, like, it can be really scary and hard for us to let go. Like, mm-hmm. when you know you're at that point, you've had those conversations, you've said this is really like where I'm at and y'all aren't aligned anymore that's really hard to make that transition um just know that like go through it and like you said that we're gonna have so many like lonely times maybe but the reward of it is so much bigger than you can actually imagine a thousand percent and yeah. can agree with but that. when you're in it, it is so hard to leave and so hard to step out and so hard to see what is new especially in an intimate relationship and I know like leaving my very long-term relationship high school sweetheart like that was so scary but it was one of the best things that you do ultimately yeah we like being comfortable even if that comfortability keeps us stagnant it took look i'm over here saying like yeah i I left my salon i made new friends and i left a boyfriend at the same time and i found a new one that was aligned i'm saying that after the fact but this took me so long to build the courage to do this it took me almost a year to quit my job it took me a year of being unhappy in my relationship to quit all because the fear of the unknown, the fear of yeah. what was out there that I couldn't see was scarier than just like my little comfort zone, little bubble. Yeah, so, but once you just, once you break out of your little cocoon, oh. you're just like this big, beautiful <laughs> butterfly free. and it's so fucking worth it. Like, it yeah, was so it, worth it. it is. And it's scary to see and you don't see it at first. But then like things just start m- making sense and afterwards. That's Cause why you don't have that weight weighing you down anymore. Right. And that's why crazy. I feel like it's nothing that anyone should ever take personal because it's really just your own personal evolution. Like these steps yes. are hard to take, to let go of old habits, to meet new people, to really get to your most best aligned self. So, yeah. And that goes with like every kind of relationship, family, right. Right. significant other, friends. If you got to let them right. go or if you want to grow and evolve with them, make that choice for yourself and be selfish about it. If you want to grow, let them go. Oh, <laughs> let them go and let them know. And just, <laughs> yeah. Evolve. I think end of the day, just focus on yourself yeah. and whatever it is you want to do. And the right people will align with that. They will be patient. at the right They're, time. Yeah. They will be Don't there when it. you need them, not yes. when you want them. Big facts. Yeah. Big I wouldn't facts, have facts. been able to handle y'all back then. Cause I was just, I was, <laughs> I wasn't ready. No, not that y'all are like a lot either. to handle. I just wasn't ready to right. be a good friend. Like I Me didn't too. know how to be a good friend yet because I literally <laughs> had no friends. I was like, wait, I need to learn how to friend before I uh, have these friends. So you'll find these people. And I think like the, just the summary of what we talked about is really like setting boundaries with the people that are in your life and that you can't really like kick out of your life. And boundaries AKA can be positive. Family. Just a reminder. It doesn't yeah. have to be like neglecting things. It could be exactly. including someone in certain things. Yeah. Like too. this yeah. is just what's important to me. You know, if you don't understand Communicate. it, that's okay. You know, just as long as you can support me in whatever way you can. Great. And you know, live your freaking life. 
be but selfish. Put yourself first. Yes. yes. Yeah, put yourself yes. first. Don't be afraid to be alone and grow by yourself. And then, like we're saying, the right people will come It'll into your life It'll make the relationships the right you do have after you found yourself so much stronger yeah, and happier. Yeah, it's going to be hard, and you're not going to see, like, you're not going to see the outcome at first, but it's definitely worth it. Also, like, think about exactly where you want to be, who you want to be, and then just go from there, like reverse engineer. Like, okay, if I want to be this person, what kind of people does this person hang out with? Mm -hmm. And really Ooh. like hold yourself that's to that. That's a really that. good, really Damn. good tip. I, there's a quote like that that's like, picture you as your highest self and start showing up as her. Yeah. Like, and you just gotta, and you just gotta fake it till you freaking yeah, make it. Right. On yeah. it. That's like my motto. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, fake it till you make it. Me, I always say, what would Miss Olympia do? What would Miss See, Olympia exactly, do? See, exactly, yeah. What would she say? How would she show up to this person? What would she say to this person to make them feel better? I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Even if you don't feel like you are that person, keep pretending showing up as that person because that's who you really are yeah. supposed to be. God wouldn't put it in your spirit if it wasn't really who you were supposed to be. Right. So, Amen. 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 <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> That was great, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this pod. And let us know if you guys want Erica on the podcast more. Even if you say no, she's coming on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> she you don't have a choice. Our fourth musketeer. I know. She has just great, like, great insight. And this is the, great, the best friend group that I've ever had. And I'm so blessed Agreed. to have you guys. Yes. And as always, guys. we love oh, you all I so much. You. And you are more powerful than you think. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Know Your Power podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. And if you believe you deserve it, make sure to leave a review and rate the show. Love you. Bye.